Oh, hello and welcome to beautiful Huntington Beach, California. I'm Mark Christopher and I'm here again inspired with another message I have. Let's ask ourselves some penetrating, penetrating, <laughs> I feel like a Tweety Bird. Let's ask ourselves some penetrating questions <laughs> as men to find out, you know, are we men? Are we acting like men? What is it to be a man? You know, we look around today, very difficult to find any kind of, you know, person to look up to and say, you know, that's being a man, that's being a man of God, that's being a strong, godly man, that's having courage, that's having faith, that's having, it's being valiant and courageous, you know. We have to ask ourselves, what do those things mean? What is it to be brave? Look at yourself in the mirror, ask yourself these penetrating questions. What is it to be courageous? What is it to be valiant in this day and age? You know, very, very hard to find. Very hard to find any kind of, you know, person to look to, anything to emulate, because it's hard to find men today because being a man is a lot more than just being born as a male. As I made very clear in my, uh, my new book, Rise Up, Men of God. You know, I spent uh, two years digging through the scriptures trying to find out what is a man of God, you know. Went through, I don't know, 30 years, of 40 years of learning and trying to find out what is it, you know? What are these concepts that make us men? What are these things that, you know, we think, you know, are manly that are feminine, you know? And so, what is it to be a man? You know, so we have to ask ourselves some of these questions, you know? How do we show and prove ourselves to be a man? How do we show and prove ourselves to be a man? It's very, there's no, there doesn't seem to be any gauge to go by. We can't just say, plug in who we are and what we're doing to a certain gauge and say, okay, I'm valiant, I'm brave. You know, what is it? You see someone who's brave, what distinguishes him from someone who's a coward? You know, and so after, you know, researching, digging, you know, I came up after two years. Oh, what is it to be a man of God, you know? <laughs> and, you know, it, it came down to the simplest of all things, you know? We show ourselves to be men by our actions. What separates somebody who's a coward from someone who's brave is the way they act. It's the way they act under pressure, the way they act, you know, under, um, you know, when they're in war. I mean, take General Patton, for instance, you know. Uh, he saw so much of that in his lifetime. Imagine being General Patton and being in all those skirmishes and hearing the stories of all these cowardly men and brave men over and over and over. You know, in every skirmish, in every battle, in every success, in every failure. You know, to see those, you know, he got a real good picture of what it's life, you know. And so, that's one of the ways, you know, that we do it, you know. It's our actions, you know. The guy, when the grenade goes launched into a foxhole, the guy that dives on it to save everyone else is the one that's being brave and valiant. He's the one who's giving his life, doing something above, you know, for others, you know. And so, this is what we need to try to understand, you know. Are we being men? Are we acting like men? Are we acting like effeminate, you know? Examples of men that sensitive to everything and stand for nothing. Okay, and so this is what our nation has come to. And so this is a very important message for me to share now. This is not, oh, you know, it's a mystical thing, you know. It's going on every day. 
people acting ungodly, running away from every battle possible, walking around with their chest out like a peacock, you know, like the rooster. Oh yeah, I'm a man, look at me. You know, are you, you know? Patton said, um, battle is the most magnificent competition in which a human being can indulge. It brings out all that is best it removes all that is base. All men are afraid in battle. The coward is the one who lets his fear overcome his sense of duty. Duty is the essence of manhood. And in the Christian realm, I'd like to add, obedience is the essence of Christianity. If you're obeying God, this is the essence of Christianity. You're walking in His statutes. You're trusting Him by doing what he's told you, believing the outcome that he said would come. We're trusting God, we're believing God, we're acting like men. And so, you know, these are some of the things we need to comprehend and, and begin to, you know, figure out, you know, and under, come to understand because it's up to us, to each one of us as men to rise up the calling that we were individually called to and that's to speak up stand up for what's right and oppose that which is wrong and that which is evil which is not going on in our country today which has turned us into the enemies of God because now we no longer stand for the things of God we oppose the things of God get it okay so this is how God made us, you know. Um, if you look at King David, great example of someone who's brave, you know, going in and risking his life to save that sheep from the lion who was going to eat him. You got to admit, that's brave, you know. <laughs> I'd be like, see you, little sheepy. <laughs> You're done. But he did, you know. And his, he was an example, you know, of what it was like to be brave, you know. And the Bible says that when Saul got so freaked out at him, started chasing him around, it said that he went to hide in one of these caves. And the Bible declares that all these men came to him that were a mess. People that lives were just nothing, destroyed, in debt, broken, you know, no sense of self-worth or anything that they could, you know, look to themselves and say, look at me, I'm a man, you know. But they hung out with David, and they learned from him as he did things. And for the longest time, of course, David was great at this, you know, always trying to put God first in whatever he did and said, you know. And so this is how we were made to be like this, you know. We look at some of the great, his great mighty men, David's great mighty men. Um, there's um, Adino the Esnite, there's a whole... Chron chronologically, you know, talking about different ones. And so, Adino the Esnite, he was one of the greatest, the Bible says. It says, he went out at one time and lifted up his spear against 800 people who he slew at one time. Pretty wild. Jonathan and his armor bearer, we always remember that one. All of Israel's hiding and cowering from the Philistines because, you know, they've overtaken the land. And Jonathan says to his arm bearer, hey, I got a great idea. Let's go show ourselves to these guys. If they tell us to come up, we'll go. Let's do it. <laughs> sure enough, they did. Great victory. And David, of course, with the sheep. And so, this is what it's like, you know. This is what God wants us to be like. God wants us to be brave. You know, He wants us to fight for Him. Like, like some of these great, great and mighty men that have gone before us. You know, because it's time to do this. You know, we can't just continually think someone else is going to do it. We can't continually live our lives and be silent to these things that are unrighteous and ungodly. That are destroying the fabric of our nation causing us 
to become an ungodly nation seeking after ungodliness. Okay, and so make your choice, you know, do whatever you want. I mean, this is what it comes down to. Okay, and so one of my favorite stories in the Bible is the Bible is the story of Shama. This is a a guy who uh, is with Israel, one of David's mighty men, and it says that uh, in the story of him in the scripture it talks about the state of Israel and they're all running from the Philistines. Again, they're hiding because of their, you know, failure to do what was right in God's eyes, overtaken by the enemy, and here he is hiding every day in a bean field. Every day, the, every time the Philistines would come by trying to kill a few just for the fun of it. He would be with everyone else running away. But something happened to this guy, Shem. I love the story because no one said anything to him. Didn't hear a word from a prophet. Didn't hear a voice from God. He was simply a, a godly man like you and I. And he saw the way things were going in, in around in the nation, if you will. And Something rose up inside this guy and he said, you know, that's not right. And he said, you know, I'm a Christian. And you know, I'm called to stand here, you know, and fight these enemies of God. And he says, he, made, he must have made a, a promise to himself at some point and said, you know, next time they come down here and run through this field, I'm not running. I'm going to stand and fight. You know, he had to do that or he just freaked out when he saw them one too many times. <laughs> <laughs> it just went like a madman. Either way, you know, he got tired of running. And this is such a good message for our country today because, especially as men, you know, look at the last 50 years, 40 years, 30 years. Christians, we've been hiding, saying nothing while this nation has gone into the sewer, into the toilet. And so, look at us. We say all of this is good now. And as Christians, it's all evil. And we say all oh, and, and they say, oh, this is bad. We can't have prayer in school. Oh God, we can't do anything like that. Oh God, we can't do the Pledge of Allegiance anymore. Oh, it's not fair to some people. They make all kinds of everything. Oh, that's not good. That's evil. Oh, that's not evil. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Heather has two moms. Oh, that's good, five-year-old. You can be a lesbian when you grow up. Yeah, that's good. But oh, creation. No such thing is bad. That's bad. So, this is us. I mean, you can candy coat it, make it seem like something else, but that's what it is. And so this was a low point in Shama's life, like it is in our life as Christians in a day like today. And you know, something rose up inside him. And he said, next time they come, I'm not running. And can you imagine what that must have been like? You know, and I have to say, as a believer, I can relate to what Shama went through. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it's hard living for God and the enemies with God do win and take advantage of you and do overwhelm us at times. And we need to know how to fight and how to rise up and get past that and become strong leaders that God has called us to be, you know? I remember um, difficult times in my lives, you know. I mean, the tide was out. <laughs> with emotions, with relationships, spiritually in my life, the tide was out. <laughs> you know, low point, if you would. Low tide in my life, you know? And I remember, Running to running away, if you will, to different indulgences like alcohol, you know, other things. You know, as men, we run away to all kinds of indulgences, you know, you know, and so, you know, I know how he felt, Shama felt running away from the enemy, you know, and so something rose up in him, you know. I mean, when you think about the whole story, 
to that point, it seemed insane. You know, all these murderers riding through, you know, on horseback. I mean, imagine, imagine, you know, some, they gather together into a troop and then rush through the bean field, you know, and everyone's running away, <laughs> except for this one guy, right? Shema, what a name, you know? Should be, should be Rambo instead of Shama, you should call him Rambo, you know. He goes, uh, here he is, right? One guy. And this is what it's like for us, okay? America, Christian people. The Old Testament, very similar to what we go through, you know, in life. Because there it is, this guy standing before impossible odds, ready to be trampled to death. Can you imagine? Say there's 30 of them, riding on their horsebacks, with their swords drawn, galloping straight towards this one guy that refused to leave. Can you imagine? It was going through his heart, going through his mind. It's like, all right, God, here I am. You told me to stand. I'm gonna stand up for you. I mean, how crazy that seems to do that you know and that's and it doesn't seem much different in our life when we begin to stand up and speak against the current and what the enemy's trying to do in our nation and we begin to speak against that it's like we've come into a great battle and all the hell wants to kill us you know or at least silence us you know and so you can relate to what it, he felt like. And the wonderful part of the story is how that story ended. Because here he is, they get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to this one man that refused to, refused to leave. I don't know, what do you think happened? I think maybe uh, he kinda bent down slowly like David, picked up a few beans, looked at him. Got himself a nice hard one, <laughs> a little bean. Saw the first rider coming, wham! See the bean at him, hit him right between the eyes, boom! Dropped him off his horse, picked up his sword, and started hewing down the rest of these guys. Can you imagine the victory that taking place in that mean field while everybody was running away? He stood his ground. And the Bible says something very interesting in that scripture which really brings it to heart for me. And, uh, and, and what that is, is, uh, what that is, is, um, well, here he is, here he is, fighting to the death uh, in, in spite of what happened, you know what I mean? And so, God says, at the end of that scripture, he says, the Lord wrought a great victory, okay? and so. When you hear that, you can't assume that the victory in the bean field was a great victory. Because when we hear great victory in the Bible and these kind of situations, it's usually when uh, Israel, would, God would raise up a deliverer and he would overwhelm them and they would, the enemies would leave the land, there would be great spoils and uh, victory would be the Lord's, it would be a great victory. But this wasn't like this, that this was different. This was a guy who stood up in one battle, you know. All of Israel was still hiding from their oppressors, you know. The whole garrison of Philistines probably came out to that little bean field the next day <laughs> to find out what happened to this little bean field. Look at all of our guys, they're all dead. What happened, you know? And so, I believe when God calls this that story a great victory, what he's referring to is the victory in a man's heart. You know, as men, when we refuse to, you know, run away to these different indulgences that we do because the pressures are too hard or we just feel too overwhelmed, when we stop doing that and begin to stand and do what's right, God calls that a great victory. That's a great victory. It's a victory in the heart of a man. And that's what God's trying to get us to as Christians in this country and as men in this country, you know. 
God wants us to show ourselves men. He wants us to stop running away to these different indulgences and rise up. Contend for real faith and contend for real purity. Fight evil in our lives, you know. Stop doing these things that you know are wrong, or at least attempt to stop doing them. This is, the, this is what it all comes down to. It's time to fight for the things of God. It's, it's time to roll up our sleeves and engage the enemy. There's no easy way to explain a fight. It's two people giving everything they have to defeat the enemy. This is a fight. There's no way to candy coat it. There's no way to make it easier. There's no way to make a punch in the face any less than a punch in the face. If we're going to rise up and become the men of God, we're going to get punched and we're going to have to punch back. And so, you know, it's important to learn how to fight. You know, God wants us. I mean, think about if we don't fight, which is what we haven't been doing, you know, as Christians in this country. Look, we've been allowing everything to go on. Okay, America, go ahead. Do your own thing. And now that they have, woo! Boy, I wish we stopped a long time ago. But that's because we've given up as men, Christian men. We've said, you know what? It'll probably be okay. We'll let the women do it. We'll let the kids do it. I know. I know. It'll probably get better by itself. No, all of those things are incorrect. What if David ran away when he saw Goliath? What if David came in and saw Goliath and said, Oh, the heck with this. That guy's going to kill me. You know? What if our forefathers in this country never rebelled against England? Imagine that. With they never rebelled against England because of the tyranny. If America never rose up and said, that's tyranny the way we're being treated. And you know what? We're not putting up with it anymore. We're going to fight this. And they did. Revolutionary War. And they won. God bless America. What if we uh, never responded to Pearl Harbor? I mean, evil, communist, attack. You know, this shows you what China's like. They won't... They're always going to be like this. They're always going to want to sneak attack on Pearl Harbor, pretending they're our friends. They're always going to be like this. This is who they are. And so, it would do us well to understand this and to and, and allow that to happen. Hallelujah. What if we never fought against slavery as a, a nation? What if we never said, you know what, slavery's wrong. What if we never stood up for it and fought against it? You know, we got to consider these things, you know, as Christians, because, you know, when you say nothing, you're actually agreeing with everything else that's going on. So by staying silent at this time, in a great time in our nation, when it's so important for us as Christians to rise up and say, you know what, in God's eyes, that's not right. In God's eyes, you know, that is right, and begin to emulate, you know, the things that this nation was founded upon. You see, until we do that, we're stuck. We're stuck here, you know, on this side of God's favor, and this is not where we want to be. We're doing everything that is, would offend God, and we're doing nothing that would en encourage His grace and favor. And so, this is what it comes down to. It's not a game. We're not... There is a God. This all really happened. This nation doesn't come into existence without the power of God. The principles that this thing was built upon, our nation doesn't become what it is without these principles. Okay? Yes, there is God. Yes, there's the power of God. Yes, our nation was built upon it. Not anymore. We've left that. Don't think for a second that God's not real. And don't think for a second that all hell's not about ready to break loose. Because the defiant and 
deceptive, deviant, destructive, defiant nation that used to say we're one nation under God. Okay, so this is an important concept, you know, that we realize, you know, it's, it's not a little thing, it's an important concept. And so this is one of the parts we have to remember in this message. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I thought of a way to help remember. <laughs> I, uh, if you ever remember, um, if you're my age, you remember growing up uh, in uh, a little bit after my time, they came up with Schoolhouse Rock, remember? And they would sing songs to try to get you to remember these concepts <laughs> in English, if you will. And so, Remember the song? Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Ba 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 ba. Right? And so, yeah, I wrote a song. <laughs> it's time to fight. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. Well, I'm new at this. I'm not too good at it, and so I'm gonna take a whack at it. But hey, it could be fun, right? Sorry. Sorry. I'll be, I'll be better prepared next time. Oh no. Nope. I know, you're gonna love it. Okay, let's try this again. Very sorry. Believe God and the weather. Believe God, we're gonna believe God and the weather. 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 Believe God. I'm gonna believe God and no other. Got a real type of thing going down in our heart. There's a whole lot of Jesus going round. Got a real type of love in our heart going round. The whole lot of Jesus going round. Oh, God wants a hunk. He doesn't want no punk. God wants a hunk. Forget about that punk, oh, God wants a hunk. Forget about that punk, oh, God wants a hunk. Forget about that punk. Dun 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 da da. Do 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 ba ba. I need my phone. Whole lot of Jesus going round. Got a real type of love in our heart going down. There's a whole lot of Jesus going round. Oh, God wants a hunk. He doesn't want no punk. God wants a hunk. Forget about that punk. God wants a hunk. Forget about that punk. God wants a hunk. Don't be that punk. Da, 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 da. So unorganized. I'm sorry, we'll fix it next time. We're gonna let God's spirit out. 
We're gonna let God's spirit out. Type of thing going on in our heart. There's a thing that's going round. All right, I tried it. Okay. Well, that didn't go the way I thought. Because I can only have two hands. Why isn't somebody helping me do this? Why do I have to do this on myself? Okay. Okay, so. So, so growing up as a kid in Massachusetts, you know, I, I never had a, had a mean bone in my body. You know, you ask my siblings, my parents, you know, anyone that knew me my whole life. I was just always this very sweet guy, you know, very, very, always bullied as a child and high school got big and strong, never bullied anyone, never got in a fight, got in one fight my whole life, you know, and so and I was only six years old, you know, because my mom, you know, told me to go do it, you know, and so, so, you know, fighting is not something that I'm ready to do usually, you know what I mean? I try to live pure and do things, you know, that I know are right, but, um, but I, I'm, this, I'm not mean, I'm not looking for a fight, I don't enjoy it, I don't like that, I don't need that to feel like, you know, somebody, you know, and so I remember so funny if you think think of it I mean I remember first grade going to the bus stop at six years old and this new kid in the neighborhood came up to me and pushed me down and I went back home which was three or four houses away and my mom came to the porch and I said mom <laughs> you ready I said, Mom, Stephen pushed me down at the bus stop, right? I don't know what to do. I'm not a fighter, right? My mom hauls off and slaps me in the face. Whack! And it woke me up. And she pointed at me and she said, You go back there and you fight him right now. <laughs> right? My mom, beautiful, sweetest thing. Never had anything like this before or after. Just this one moment in time. An angel, I mean, Mary Teresa. This woman, right? But I'll never forget that. And I went back to that bus stop. I pushed that kid down. Put my knees on his shoulders.